So welcome to the School of Greatness podcast. Mm -hmm. Julian Huff, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, thanks for having me. I'm so pumped that we're gonna salsa dance afterwards and hopefully get this <laughs> on film because I just had so much fun dancing with you. I know, that was so fun. I literally, because I told you, like I do choreograph stuff or I yeah. try to teach people, but like the way that you just could lead me, that's like the greatest gift for a girl. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like when a guy can just lead you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because you've never really gone out into a club and just been like, let's no. do this. like non-choreographed, yeah. just improv, right? No, yeah. I mean like, hey, when I'm when I'm out and I'm having a good time, like I'll just dance, but I usually dance by myself. <laughs> really? You just do your own little choreography, yeah. choreography. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So yeah, I'd love to go. All right. Well, we'll we'll record afterwards and maybe I'll take you out in LA sometime. Yeah. Get you and your boyfriend to come yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. Um so I'm excited to meet you and talk with you and uh, yeah. your energy is just so magnetic. Oh, and I know thanks. why people love you. <laughs> because of your smile and your energy and your passion. And it comes across in all of your dancing, your singing and your acting. So I just want to say thanks for the way you show up in the world because it's really powerful. Thank you. And that, that's a lot of fun. That really means a lot because I feel like that's, that's something that I kind of learned, I think, over the years that I think that that's I think that's something that I that I want to give to the world. Yeah. Like I want to I want to be a light and I want to be like a light of love and joy to give to the world and inspire others and yeah. so thanks. Well, you're doing it. <laughs> so I want to start off with gratitude. I'm I'm big yes. on gratitude in my life and I live it constantly. So I want to ask you what are you most grateful for recently in your life? Most most recently? Wow. Um I'm grateful. Uh, gratitude is a huge one for me yeah. also. So I mean the thing that I'm most grateful for at this moment, um, and I know that it's cliche to say my family, but that's what I'm really, really grateful for right now. That's so, cool. Yeah. yeah. And you're the youngest, right? I'm the baby. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I love yeah. the baby. And there's, is there five of you or four of you? There's five. Yeah, there's four of us. Okay. Very cool. Um, but I want to talk about how it, this all began. Because yeah. you're, you're you know, movie star, you're a celebrity, yeah. you're dancing with the stars, you're now a judge singer, lots of different things happening, but how did it all begin? Was it all starting out with dance or were you actually singing and acting before then as well? Yeah, um, when, I was, when I was a kid, my oldest sister, Shari, she was a ballet dancer. So we kind of were just dragged along, you know, and like <laughs> sure. my, my brother wanted to play sports, but he had to dance, so. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we started dancing, but then we would be in plays all the time yeah. where we were acting and singing and I was always the youngest so I wasn't technically allowed to be in any of the classes because it was you know I was too young but I would come home and I would know all the lyrics I would know the dance moves and like yeah I I would go and watch and I, I'm very visual gotcha so. so you would just go and watch in the corner yeah. and just pretty much do the moves in your in your, Completely. In your mind yeah and come back and know it. <laughs> yeah wow. So, yeah. so you're like an understudy. I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but I am. I'm very visual. Like, you, wow. like I would always say in school, I was not very. I wasn't my best in school because it was all a lot of like, like audio or like I had to yeah. see it like or write it down. And like for me, it's it's, it's show me how it's done and I can do it. But yeah. I was exact. That's, that's funny because I had a second grade reading level when I was in eighth grade. Oh really? And I just couldn't learn yeah. in school. Like books were just so challenging for me to understand and comprehend. Yeah, me too. But sports, I was like, let's be moving and active, and I can totally. pick it up. Totally. You know. That's to that's me right? for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, Thank God for sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I agree. Dance. Well, hey, dancing is a sport. In my it opinion, is. So, yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, so you got into it early, but you were living in the states, and then you moved to London to start kind of training more full time, right? Yeah. So we were at the studio in in Utah, and um, my brother and I were there, and we were kind of. How old were you? Sorry. I was like eight years old okay, wow. and from like eight to ten I was really I was really into it and I loved it so much and we had our dance coaches from England they would come to to Utah at our studio and they would teach like once once a once every like three months like a workshop a workshop yeah. and we'd be with all these adults and my brother and I'd be like eight nine you know years old and we'd be the first ones to raise our hands and we'd be in the front sure. row and like we were so passionate about it and and then yeah and then like my parents were going through a divorce at the time so mm -hmm. it was kind of a good way to 
kind of get us out of the house for a little bit right. and like have us go have this amazing experience while they're figuring out their stuff. So uh -huh. we decided that um, we were going to go to London, live with our dance coaches. Wow. And, and how we were, were you when I you I was 10. 10. And my brother was 13. So you started when you were eight. Yeah. And two years later, you moved to London mm -hmm. with your dance coaches. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so, and I was doing ballroom mm -hmm. dancing, tap, jazz, hip hop, whatever. Um, but the ballroom and the Latin wasn't as uh, refined. Uh -huh. I was just, I guess, gifted in that but I yeah. but I wasn't I didn't really have the technique yeah and so when we went to England um, it was pretty cool because I was 10 years old I moved there and I was like wait I thought there were gonna be horse-drawn carriages <laughs> and like big dresses and little sure. guys with spectacles and <laughs> it was like dark and dreary and, yeah. food, and, and like, it ah. was like people were wearing normal clothes yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like, <laughs> and it was gonna be like Dickens or something right, right, right. Um, but anyway so I got there and um, yeah, I was like the youngest, and and I just it was intensive because I was competing against older. It was like kids. professionals, right? It, yeah, professional. Or semi professional. Yeah, semi, -pro semi professional, but they were all older than me, and so I would watch the girls, and I would just I would try to pick up everything that I could from these like really mature, you know, sixteen year olds at ten, wow. and then like twenty year olds, and like, you know, and I would pick it up and. It was it was intensive, but I always say like if you're the best in your class, then go to another class, mm. because like that's not going to teach you. That's just going to kind of keep you there. So, mm. um, so yeah. So it was really intensive, but it was awesome. I really like that because you know I'm always looking to increase my circle of influence and yeah. surround myself with people in business at a different level than me. Not mm -hmm. at my level, but really expand myself. Completely. So it sounds like the same thing. And, mm -hmm. You know, and also in sports, we were always trying to play against the varsity guys. And yeah. And, you know, yeah. just to get better. That's Completely. cool. So how long were you there for? I was supposed to stay for three months and I ended up staying for five years. Wow. Um, yeah. So until so, I was 15. Okay. And it was, it was a really amazing experience because it taught me like to come out of my bubble, which was in Utah, which is a very, you know, very conservative community. And then I would go to England and it was just like the complete opposite. <laughs> right. And anyway, so we, we went there and, um, and like I grew up really, really fast. And I think I was more mature at 15 than I am now. Because <laughs> You're like a kid now. I'm a kid now. Whereas yeah. like I had to really grow up really uh, fast and I was really responsible and I and I was always perfect and on time and yeah. you know, like all those things. And now I'm kind of just more laid back and enjoy the moment. And so so anyway, so I came back when I was 15. And I was like, I just want to go to high school. I want to know what it feels like to be a normal kid. And um, so I went to high school. And after three days, I was like, all right, I'm done. Wow. <laughs> but I had to obviously finish. So <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I graduated when I was 18. And I came out to LA with $2,000. And I told my dad I had five. I don't know why three thousand dollars made more of a difference, right. but in my mind it did. So, yeah, I came out with two thousand dollars, and yeah. So, I'm, what I'm curious about is, at ten years old, you're thrown into the mix mm -hmm. of like this, you know, ballroom. From my understanding, is very sensual, very sexual, yeah. very like risque. You have to really be in the moment get and in like there. Get, in the, <laughs> get in the zone. Otherwise, yeah. if you're not convincing, then uh -huh. no one's going to be convinced in you. Completely. If you're not enrolling, then no one's going to be enrolled mm -hmm. in your performance. Yeah. Um, so, what were some of those experiences like, you know, when you're 10 to 15, having to be this sexual, sensual woman, or perfect, like you said, and like mm -hmm. have curves when you didn't have curves and all these things? Like, oh, yeah. What was that like and what came up for you during that time? Confusing. Okay. That's like the best word that I can <laughs> put for it because it was confusing because even at like seven, eight, nine years old when I was in Utah, I people used to tell me like, she's really sexy and like seven? That, at seven yeah and it's it's weird because I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong uh -huh. but I I just felt it you know and like I would right. just dance and then of course that was heightened when I went to um, when I went to England because it, professional. It, it was professional level and like we're competing every week and I was performing and competing against people that were older than me and you gotta like, show a lot of skin and like oh yeah and and like that part never really bothered me I don't know why I just I don't know, but the the part that I will always remember is being ten years old, and they had fake boob cups no way. in the dress. In your yeah, and I would like poke them, and Shut they would stay. Up. No <laughs> like, way. <laughs> because I was like flat, like I was ten years old, you know. <laughs> and so it wow. was. It was that same thing of like overly kind of sexualizing like a kid, which 
I think there's good and bad to that. I mm. think like it's great for what it is and like it taught me a lot, but at the same time it's confusing when I would have to go and be my 10 year old little kid self and go to school and like I'd have these long nails on and fake really? tan on and like. Makeup probably. And, work. and and that was what was kind of sad too is I was like, well, I look at pictures. I'm like, I don't think I have any pictures of me without makeup on. Wow. Yeah. So As a 10 year old. like a 10 year old. Cause I felt like I needed it when I, when I was off the dance floor, I was like, oh, I, I was like, I have to wear makeup because, you know, like I have to, I think it was all <clears throat> always a, like having to please people mm. and like kind of fit in and be accepted. And so like, I just, I always wanted like the older guys to like me. <laughs> like well, who, I wanted the older girls yeah. to like me. And like, you know, it was, it was kind of like, I, I needed to be more mature to fit in. When did that so, start? Um, shifting for you when did you realize that you didn't need to be that way that you didn't need to like like two years ago okay. <laughs> yeah it took a while so to figure that out how did it, what came about how did that come about um i actually went to a tony robbins seminar yeah and God, it, why is he so powerful he's so great i know and like <laughs> and i always say that to people i'm like look it, i know it sounds crazy because i'm i'm like such a believer of tony robbins yeah. but like it's because he knows how to like communicate with people yeah. and knows how no like really knows how to connect with people and like what they go through so i mean it could be me it could be my dog it could be you teaching the seminar or whatever yeah. but like he just has a really yeah, yeah. great way to get it to connect with you so anyway um so i went to the seminar and i didn't really even want to go um my i was like in my single year i was like <laughs> having a lot of fun but it's kind five of, full days yeah, right? yeah. it's six, six yeah full six full days like nine to midnight like 15 hour days and yeah. like anyway so my brother actually asked me to go and like all my sisters and my mom went and i was like okay well i know it's really important to you so i'll go for like two days uh, yeah, yeah i'll check and it then out I, and then i'll go home <laughs> it's like first day i was like oh my gosh <laughs> i was like I, this is exactly what i need so i ended up staying for the whole time and it was like you didn't even want to go to the bathroom or eat or anything because you wanted to like not miss anything. So well, he doesn't go to the bathroom. No, I know. <laughs> or he, he's there on stage the whole. That's almost the most impressive thing is watching him it is. not leave the stage for 15 hours. It is. It is. But but that's where like, um, yeah, that's where my whole everything changed. What opened up for you during that week? Clarity and awareness of things that I did and mm. and and the kind of person that I was being without even knowing it. And what was that type of person? I was I was doing everything with the like the purpose and the meaning behind it that like all I want is love and acceptance and like mm. I want to feel significant to people to people and important and I want, you know, I want to feel all these things like I want to feel successful and I want to do this and I want to do that, but at the end of the day, like I was doing it for everybody else to get. Mm. And so like I needed everybody else to fulfill me mm. and I was, I was thinking about it and part of the seminar helped me, but like um, I was thinking about like why I wanted to be an entertainer when I was a kid and like why I wanted to be an entertainer now and the meaning was so different. What was it when you were a kid? When now? I was a kid, I was like, it's so much fun. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. This is so fun. And like, people are laughing and like, we're just having a good time and we're being creative. And then like, as I got older, I realized it was like, I wasn't having fun anymore. Huh. I was just trying to get the next thing and like what the next part of my career was going to do for my career and the success of that. And like being the most important person and like all those things where I knew underneath, I still love to do everything that I did, but I was doing it for a different reason. A lot more pressure, it seems like. Oh my gosh, and I never felt successful in anything that I really? did, and I was never good enough, and like wow. all these different things, and, and people would find that hard to believe, and I'd be like, well, yeah, but I'm not there yet. And they're like, but look at what you've done. And I'd be like, yeah, but it's not, it's not, it's enough. not enough. So how would you feel when you would, <clears throat> you know, you won Dancing with the Stars a number of times, yeah. or you, come out with a new record. How would you feel when you released something or you won something or you checked yeah. it off the list or the, the movie came out? How would you feel? What's next? Mm. Yeah. So it was never Always. like appreciating the moment, never. like being yeah. grateful for this and excited. It was yeah. like, this isn't enough. Yeah. What's next? Wow. Well, I mean, the you know, when I went Dancing with the Stars, trust me, I was on a high. I was like, ah, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Two but days then, later, you were like, okay, what? A day one. later, I, I was like, one. okay, what's next? And like, I have to have my music career and I have to have my, my acting career and I have to have this and that and that. And, and when I 
got through all that and I realized what I was doing it all for and then I kind of came back to my 10 year old self mm. which was like let's go have fun yeah. and enjoy it and like have a good time <laughs> I ended up feeling like the most successful person wow. and like I was like wow look what, look at everything that I've done and like I'm so proud of myself and yeah. like and I think that's really hard for people to say because you know, like, oh, it's hard to it's say really that you're hard. proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. And one, because you're like afraid of what people are gonna think. Are they gonna think that I'm cocky? And it's like, screw everybody else what yeah. they think of me. I'm like, am I proud of myself? Yeah, I'm proud of myself. That's good. So, yeah. And, I like it. and everything is just better now. Like, mm. and, and I find that I'm, I'm getting more things that are just coming in. And it's that kind of energy where you're just, you're just being and you're just living and you're just, you're just enjoying things, and and then you find that you're you're attracting more things that yeah. come your way, and and more success or whatever, however you define it. But yeah, life is just great right now. Amazing! <laughs> I'm excited for you. Yeah. But it comes across that way too. It doesn't seem yeah. like you're stressed or you have any weight on your shoulders. Yeah. You're just like, let's have fun. Well, yeah, and I would notice that a lot. I'd be like. <gasps> And I'd always really? take deep breaths, like, oh, I'm overwhelmed and like, I need, I need to do this. And like, why am I not that person that's that, mm. per, you know, like I'm, I would compare myself to people all the time. Like, wow. why am I not there? And they're there. Like, I'm doing what I can and I'm trying so hard. And I'm like, that's the You're point. Trying. I'm trying so hard. Just be. Yeah. Just be and wow. like being authentic and real. And like, I know it's easy to say that, but when you can find it and you feel that feeling, you don't ever want that feeling to go away. Yeah. Like that's almost like the addiction now for me is like, it's not the like, it's not that I've lost my drive, but like, it's the, like I used to hate, sorry, I'm all tangenty You're right good. now. Do it. And my, go I'm on like it. all over the place. Go on but it. it's like, I used to hate feeling satisfied. Mm. I used to like, I, I used to say wow. that if I ever felt like I was, you know, content, that was the worst thing in the world. And so then I would, I like last year, I started feeling content and I was like, oh, does that mean my drive's gone? Your hustle's gone, your drive. Yeah, my yeah. hustle and like, you know, cause I used a lot of like the negativity that has happened in my life to prove myself, mm -hmm. to show what I've gone through. And I got rid of that. So I was like, is my drive gone? Like, do I not have like, I just want to relax on the weekends. Yeah. And what I realized was that, like, it didn't go away. It actually just made me more calm and peaceful so that I was more able mm. to go and be really passionate about the things that I loved when I needed to do that. And then I could turn off. Do you feel like you're more in the flow every day now or with, uh, you know, your work or your... Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I yeah. mean, I still have my moments where I'm like... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I mean, you know, I, I do. I remind myself how yeah. grateful I am yeah. that, you know, I, I get to do what I do. Yeah, that's you know? awesome. So, sorry, that was m major tangent. No, that's perfect. But <laughs> that's what everyone needs to hear, though. Yeah. And what would you actually say to someone, whether they're a busy entrepreneur or yeah. they got a family and they feel like they want to make more money and they just feel like they have yeah. so much going on and they're never in the zone, they're constantly stressed, what, would you, what advice would you give to them? I would say find some rituals that you mm. do. To, to calm you down and put you in a, what Tony likes to say is a peak state, yeah, you know, course. like, um, what are your so rituals? My rituals are in the morning. Like I, I breathe and I, and I, and I think about the things that I'm grateful for. Uh -huh. And I think about what I want to do that day. And I think about how, how I can, not what I'm going to do, but how, mm. how I'm going to be mm. to, how I'm going to be in, so in that day. Yeah. And, and what are the things that come up often for you? What are those ways of being? Kindness, for sure. Yeah. I mean, kind, being kind, I, I think there's a lot of anti-bullying and that's, yeah. a, that's an anti thing. And I'm like, well, the only like cure for that is by doing something. So yeah. instead of being anti-bullying, before kindness. Before kindness. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's always about what can I do? to mm. to to inspire like yeah. and, and to love and like to just yeah so that's i don't know great. that's uh, i want to now be remembered for who i am as a person rather than what i've accomplished and it and then what i've accomplished is great because then it will be a platform to be that person yeah. you know and like help so that's cool yeah. what other rituals throughout the day or maybe at night do you do something before bed or music is really important <clears throat> to me because it gets me in a great mood yeah. and so when i'm the singing or yeah when i'm singing <laughs> or I'm, I'm like moving around and i feel great like just life is wonderful i i, I make sure i kiss my dogs every day and like we play the and girls the girls lexi and harley <laughs> um and 
And I think for me too, I, I try to listen. I think mm. a lot of the times I, um, in the past for sure, and, and it still catches up with me, but I, I just, um, I kind of just go on L my day. Listen to what? Listen to yourself listen or listen to, to others? Listen, listen to, to people, like a conversation. Like I think that sometimes I just am waiting for like the end of the conversation. Really? Yeah. I mean, now or you used to be like that? I used to be like that and sometimes that creeps in. Why do you wait to the end? Because I'm always, again, trying to, what's, what's next, next? What's, what's next? next? And so, you so been fully present. Yeah, and so I now try to like wow. listen and like, and and understand, try to understand mm. people. So I don't know. So my rituals are kind of like again. The morning I breathe, I think about the things that I'm grateful for. I um, I listen to music and get in a good place. Yeah. And then and then before I go to bed, I don't know. I do the same kind of thing. Like think yeah. about what I'm grateful for. And yeah. How important so. is um, learning new skills and constantly improving your mind uh, for you? Are you are you are you going to more workshops or reading or listening to podcasts or yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it's kind of addicting when you mm. feel this good. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a high. It is a high, yeah. and so it's it's really fun because I feel like your community of friends, it actually shrinks first, mm. and then it grows. Mm. And it's really cool because you find that you have the same interest in, in talking about this kind of stuff is really fun, and then yeah. you're like, let's go, let's go do a seminar together, <laughs> and like, let's you know, let's read this book together, yeah, you yeah. know. And so, yeah, I'm I'm always trying to constantly fuel that. I think kind of what we were saying about like school, like it didn't mm. compute, like I, I didn't connect to it, and so mm. I didn't understand it. Whereas like life stuff like this, I'm like, this is what they need to be teaching in school. Right. I'm like, and I connect to this, so sure, like, yeah. I feel really smart. That's funny. <laughs> you know, whereas like in school, like it didn't connect with me, whereas this really connects with me. And yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm always trying to, try to, I don't know, find ways to be better, but not even be better to, to again, like prove myself, but yeah. to be better because it just feels better to, to sure. grow and always feel like you're, um, yeah, I always feel like you're growing and learning and yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I, I'm a big believer in mastering your body and yeah. having great health. Mm -hmm. um, how important is it for you to constantly be on top of your health game physically? Obviously, I think I know the answer because of what you do, but I how think is actually it? I think you're wrong. Really? Because <laughs> like I wish that I was more conscious of my health, and I think that. I think maybe I put a lot of pressure on myself because of the health thing, because I feel like that's what I should be. And so maybe everyone's I, always looking at you or judging you or pictures or whatever. Yeah. And so I feel like I have a lot of pressure to show uh. that I'm healthy. And, and I think that's one thing that I'm actually figuring out right now. Uh. Because, yeah, because I think. Tell me more about this. Okay. So I dance because I have fun. Yes and it makes my body better, yep. but I don't do it for that reason, really. I do it for, for the fun of it. And working out, I would always do for vanity. And, to um, look good. To look good, which is a great thing. You sure. want to look good, right? Yeah, yeah. But what I realized was that I was doing it all for vanity. And so now- Not to be healthy, you mean? Or not, not to, to like be improve your- no, Something. but I would feel great when I would do it. So then I would get confused, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I realized that it was for all for vanity. Uh. And like, so now I'm trying to figure out, okay, how can I, how can I work out and, and eat right and do it? But because I, I want to do it for health and not for vanity. And so yeah. I know it's, it's, challenging it's the, really the challenging. The world you're in and like. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still figuring that out. Uh. Cause by the way, I'm never going to not do it for vanity also, of but course. like, you know, I, I want to do it for the right reason right. and I want to be healthy when I have kids and like, sure. you know, and yeah. How many kids do you want to so, have? I want to have four. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was quick to answer, right? <laughs> That's correct. You, you knew that since you were like seven years old. You're like, I'm going to have yep, four kids, I'm going to here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I'm a planner. Why, why, yeah. why four? Why three or four? Um, I had a big family yeah. and I couldn't imagine my life without my siblings yeah, it's and they're my best friends and yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what is it about, what is something about you that most people don't know that they would surprise them if they knew? Um, you know, I think that, like, I love doing this interview because I'm being mm. so real and so honest. Yeah, where I appreciate I, you. Yeah, of course. Well, and, and I like that. Whereas I think a lot of people 
And I think in the past, I've always been kind of, I know what to say and, and the limit to uh, say and, and. Give your PR team on you, like yeah. the talking points. Well, that and also just to be positive and always yeah. happy and, and, and not show my weaknesses. And I think that for people, I want them to know that like, I have insecurities and yeah. I have, you know, moments in my life that I'm not proud of or that I am, you know, striving to be better at. And, and so, like, being in this world, mm. it, it's very, your image is very important to protect because you want to make sure that, you know, you don't show the weaknesses. Yeah. But for me, what I've learned is that, like, your weaknesses, your vulnerability is what makes you strong. Mm. And to be able to, you know, have somebody relate to you is, I think, really important for that person mm. because they see us here in this incredible world. Yeah. That is, it's abnormal. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not normal. Yeah. But yet we're all still normal and real. Yeah. And like we don't usually show those things. Uh -huh. So I don't know. I just would say that I'm just human, mm -hmm. and like I have my my moments and. Yeah. I have my insecurities and I cry <laughs> like yeah. and then like I'm really weird like I have I have like these weird moments and Christy will tell you but like I have these weird moments where I get really like um, like slap happy where like I get in this like weird mood and uh. I just start doing these like really like operatic voices and I'll Give sing one. I'd be like mm -hmm. <laughs> and like it's always when I'm really tired and I'll be like rolling on the floor and like I'm just kind of weird yeah. um so yeah That's, I don't know like I'm not I like, like weird weird's yeah, good weird's great it's great I love it so. how often do you feel like you allow yourself to be vulnerable whether it be in public or in private or yeah I'm I feel like I'm getting better at it for mm. sure um I think that uh um, I never used to be vulnerable. I always used to be a tough cookie and, um, you know, look how strong I am. Never let them see you sweat. Never. Like, oh, that's a piece of cake, you know? Wow. Um, because I wanted to prove, again, that I was really strong and that I could do this and I could keep yeah. up and that I was, I was meant to be here with everybody else. Right. Um, whereas now I think that, like, I don't care. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, like, um, I'm like, I, I'm not searching for people's approval anymore. I mean, of yeah. course, we all are here and there, but, like, that's not my main drive. And so yeah. I think now I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't care. I mean, if they like me, they like me. If they don't, they don't. And um, so, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's cool. So tell me how you divide your time between all these interests you have. Again, you're like a superstar at everything. So how mm -hmm. do you balance it all? Or do, is there no balance? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I'm, I'm working on the balance part because I, I, I feel like I have a lot of great ideas and I'm yeah. passionate about this and oh my gosh, this would be a great TV show idea or <laughs> I, I need to sing or I need to go on tour. And, and yeah. so I would, I would have so many things on my plate that I would never do them all really well. I would like be outstanding at all of them. I would kind of just be okay. And enough so, to make it work. Enough yeah. to make it work. And, and so... Kind of fake your way to be yeah, 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 exactly. And so I kind of... I, in the last couple of years, I'm like, okay, how do I trim the fat, basically? Oh. Like, I need to... I need to prioritize and what makes me happy? What yeah. makes me... What makes me, like, like get super excited? And if there's anything that doesn't make me feel that, I need to get it away. Yeah. And so... Um, there's there was a lot of projects that I had that it, it would just overwhelm me, but I was like, but it's such a good idea, I need to do this, and and then I was like, but I'm not even that passionate about it, <laughs> you know. But I but I'm like, but it could make a lot of money, and it could be a success, and it could be this, mm. and it could be that, and then I'm like, but I'm I really don't even care about it. Like yeah. I do because I think it could be something, but it's not that I'm like completely all in, all in yeah. on it. So what, would, what advice would you give someone who does have all these projects going on or has a new idea? Because so many entrepreneurs listen. Yeah. They always have another idea and they never mm -hmm. follow through with it. Well, and that's, I think that was what was happening with me too. So it is, it's, my advice would be to trim the fat. Like literally get all of the things that you think you have that are important uh -huh. and literally just kind of like go like this and yeah. only put the things that you are super passionate about. Like it's almost like clearing the table mm. and then grabbing the things that you're like, okay, this, this, really want. this. 
that is my priority. And then once this is kind of feeling like it's going, then I can trickle in something it's else. Got some momentum, or you yeah. got a system in place, or a team yeah. that's running it. Yeah, but if there's too much, I always feel like nothing's going to get done, or right. it's going to be half-assed, or it's sure. going to, you know, it's not going to be my full potential of what I know it could have been. Right. You know. So, so what is it you want right now? What are you, what are you? You've done so much, but like, what's what do you want in your life? What I want in my life now is structure, structure uh -huh. and stability. I think that for a long time, and just who I am, I'm all over the place. <laughs> and I that, love that yeah. about myself, that I am all like, you know, like, let's just go do this and spontaneity. And sure. But now I'm kind of wanting to be more calm and mm. settled and a little bit more stability. Yeah. So for me, I think the thing that I would really I feel like I'm an entrepreneur. You are. And, of course you um, are. <laughs> and I'm thinking about business ideas mm. that aren't necessarily me being on camera, mm. um, but that can run itself almost. Producing and, them or. Yeah, yeah, producing or, you know, even I, I have some ideas for my, my brand that my brother and I are, you know, creating Move. Yeah. And we have some, again, some outside ideas that we want to establish and put into play and and that won't be me necessarily being there yeah constantly um having to show up constantly yeah show up and be on camera so like having a way to to do that i think i'm starting to think about now and and think about like when i because i want to start having kids in like five years i'm not ready at all but sure. like in like five years so like how can i plan and set it up so yeah. that like I can take time off and, of and yet still feel like I'm involved in my business and my work, but I can be here. You don't have to so, show up for it, yeah. So I think that's where my brain is going right now. That's cool. Yeah. What's the dream? The dream is to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Throw you off guard there. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's true. The dream is I, I wanna I wanna have a family. Yeah, yeah. And I wanna I wanna be married, I wanna have a family, I wanna be able to um, I wanna still be able to perform in any manner um, mm -hmm. and it can be on a large scale like what I'm doing now or right. it could be something smaller. Uh, it kind of just depends where my life is going but I, I want to continue to make money because I want to yeah. be able to support my family of course. and um, and I think that that's, it's just fun to find out how, like ways, like, oh, I can make money from this? Being like, an entrepreneur this is, great. is so much fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm always trying to think of fun, cool ideas. Um, but also, I think my purpose has changed a little bit as well as far as, instead of receiving and getting a lot of stuff, like how can I give to the mm, world? Wow. And so. That's interesting. Yeah, and it makes, huh. I don't know, it makes life, again, it makes life so much better because, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you in on my, my, my mission statement. Let me hear it. So my mission statement is, let me get it in my peak state. <laughs> it is. What's your move? Show me your move. <laughs> my move, it's kind of funny. My brother makes fun of me all Let's the time. See it. It's, it goes, yes. So, like jazz hands? Yes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Jazz hands. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's my move. So, um, so anyway, so the purpose of my life is to be an infectious light of love and joy, mm. to celebrate the little things, mm. and to inspire others to embrace their true essence. Mm. So, and that last part. Inspire others to be their true essence. To embrace their true essence. To embrace their true essence. Mm -hmm. And like to find that, because I think that I had to find that in the last couple of years. And, and we get so um, caught up in what we need to do and ha what we need to get mm. and all those things that like we forget like the 10 year old self and, and yeah. like why we want to do it. And because yeah. it's fun, right? And exactly. so to inspire somebody else to like break down those like layers of <clears throat> what they've just done to survive it's like let's break those down let's break those down yeah, you know yeah. and i want to be there that kind of person to help people or or to inspire people that's to cool. like find that part well, i'm glad you shared your mission statement because <laughs> i want to share with you mine and i'm gonna ask you a question okay about it. So my mission is to teach 100 million people to show them how to make a full-time living doing what they love wow because i believe if everyone is making a full-time living it doesn't have to be millions mm -hmm. but enough to live and have a good life yeah doing the things that you're most passionate about that's gonna cause, uh, you're gonna heal yourself so mm -hmm. much from so much pain. Yeah. And disease is gonna be gone, relationships are gonna be better, mm -hmm. and people are doing what they love. Yeah. And they feel like what they do is matters. I agree. And making money for what matters. So.
I agree. How important is it to be clear on a mission and to have a mission statement like you just said and like I have? Yeah, I think it's really important because I never had one before mm. and I always thought like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want that, but I Do never- you know why? I didn't know why. Mm. And then I figured out why, and then I and I said yes, <laughs> and I figured out why, and I and I I have direction now, uh, and I have clarity, and like what's important is important, and what's not important is not important. Wow. And I used to there there was no filter before. Everything just kind of blended and mixed, and I didn't and I I felt kind of lost. But I was like, I'm not lost. I'm good. I, I know what I'm doing. But I was lost completely because I'm like, well, yeah, I think I'm supposed to be doing this. I think I. Uh, yeah. But having that direction, you you have a you do have a purpose. Yeah. And then every day, <clears throat> it's not a it's not a battle or a or a um, or pressure to live up to it. It just kind of somehow happens mm. because when you believe it and you think it and you say it, like you just end up doing it. Yeah. And it's yeah. That's cool. And I think I mean, when I was like a teenager, I didn't have a mission statement of like yeah. what I'm gonna do in my life. I think when you're younger, it's just trying to like figure out how to get to the next grade or yeah, get to college or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, will a girl like me? You know, can I get a girlfriend? <laughs> that was like my mission, yeah. right? <laughs> Most so kids I are. think yeah. I think where it depends on where you're at in your life, and your mission can evolve and change. Definitely. As the seasons change, new mm -hmm. relationships, new new things happen. But I think it's invaluable to have something, no matter where you're at. I agree, That's and cool. even if it's something that you don't necessarily believe fully, mm. but you want, I think that's always really good to yeah. even have that because that, again, it, 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 it gives you a, a reason yeah. and, a, and a purpose and a meaning behind it. Whereas like, like, I, like there were things that I would tell myself that I, I wasn't fully living, but I wanted to be. Mm. And so I would tell those things, tell <clears throat> myself those things. And then I ended up becoming that, yeah. you know? And like, I used to say that like, I remember going in for my Footloose audition and then he just give it to you? No, I went, I went oh, wow. in and auditioned multiple amount of times. Wow. And when I went in, I was so insecure and I was so worried that I wasn't going to get this that I could have done that and I would have shown that or I went into the bathroom and I was like I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> I was like, I am so good. I'm so going to get this. I'm awesome. Yeah. Like, I deserve this. I'm going to do this. I did not believe that at all. Wow. But I just, I told myself you in the mirror. Yourself. I tricked myself into thinking it. And I got it. Wow. And like, I've done that a lot in my life. Yeah. Because your energy doesn't lie. Yeah. If you show up nervous because you're thinking that constantly, it's going to come across very easily. Yeah, completely. Come I'm the fucking shit. I <laughs> am. Yeah. And it's like... And I've done that in like a lot of my auditions wow. or when I'm feeling like, uh, like then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. And, and this is actually pre Tony. So like, sure. I felt like I kind of did it anyway, You're pumping yourself but, up, yeah. but I would pump myself up and I, I would say things that even though I didn't believe it, like I would wow. just say it. And then I, and then I, after I would be finished, I'd be like, thank goodness I told <laughs> myself that, you know? Now, do you practice visualization a lot? Do you like visualize what you want and think about it constantly or put it on a wall, like images or any type of well, when I was When I was a kid, mm -hmm. I definitely did. And I had like, by the time I'm 16, I'm gonna do this. By the time I'm 19, I'm gonna do this and this and this. And, yeah. and literally it was like, by the time I'm 19, I wanna be a singer. And I, that's when I released my first record. Wow. When I was 21, I wanted to star in my own movie and that was Footloose. Wow. And you know, and like there were certain things along the way that happened and, and, and they would come to fruition. Like Amazing. it was crazy. And then I started, and then I stopped doing that because I achieved all those things mm. and I didn't have any of those. And I realized I made those up when I was a kid. Wow. And I was like, I need to be a kid again and make up some new ones. Some big dreams. Some big dreams. Yeah. You know, and like I forgot that I did that, but I they kept coming true. And so I don't have, I, well I do now, but I didn't have any past 21. And so I was like, oh, I need to get some dreams. <laughs> you know, and like, and like really visualize like when and how and where uh -huh. and like, the picture of what I want. What's you know? the process of this? Do you do you just uh, map it up in your mind? Do you draw it out? Do you write it down? How do you? Um, I map process? it out in my mind because I am very visual. So like I just see it. Um, but then I mean, this is there something so you tell yourself, or is there like? 
it's silly, but like every time an eyelash falls and I make a wish, uh, or like every time it's eleven eleven, or like I do, I like think I them. think about those things wow. and I like wish for it and I think about it and I know it sounds silly and um, like it's not magic, you know, it's sure. just but it is. It's like it's a reminder, like those little funny sure. wish things. But like I'll always think about those things. I think it's brilliant because if you're not reminded to think about them, yeah. it's never gonna happen. Yeah. It's not just gonna fall in your lap. You're not gonna get yeah. the role of the next movie you mm -hmm. want because you just yeah. showed up and it just fell in your lap. Yeah. You've gotta set the intention every day. Completely. Multiple times probably. Yeah. For years. Well and it's so funny now that you say that, because even like my family has this weird thing where we always see either 1111 or 211 or something 11. Same time or? And we'll always text, be like, 211, and like 10 will come in. You text like the photo of it? These yeah, totally. And it's like, the more you think about it, the more you're gonna see it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like before, I never would have even noticed that. But we see it all the time now. We'll go and like, we'll see a license plate that has it, or like we'll go to the grocery store and our change will be something 11, and it's uh. like, because you're focused on that, like that's what you see and that's yeah. what you get. And so I feel like that's the same thing in, in life, like sure. whether it's a dream that you have or if it's a, an idea that you have, the more you think about it, the more you focus on that, the more it's gonna yeah. keep coming up. And in the other side of things, the more you focus on stress. And the negative, and yeah. Drama mm -hmm. and whatever else, anger and frustration yeah. and resentment, the more you're gonna be frustrated and resentful. Completely. Absolutely. Tell me about your brother. How much of a support has he been along this entire process from London to Dancing yeah. with the Stars to movies and singing? How big of a support has he been? Oh, a huge support. And I think, you know, I, I think in even just the last few years, he's been incredible because, you know, when you're kids, we're brother and sister. So, like, like annoying. Yeah. And, yeah. like, <laughs> we never really were that, like, annoying brother and sister with each other, but we were just kind of like, well, yeah, like we're brother and sister. We look out for each other, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like it was always that kind of good thing. But I think in the last few years as we've, as we've grown up yeah. and we've had life experience has happened, like relationships and breakups yeah. and, you know, we're now really working together. I mean, trust me, I've learned a lot about my brother. You're like a, you're like a tour bus going yeah. the other way, yeah. I mean, we are emerged. You're with staying each with other. him right now, or yeah. It's a lot. But, um, you know, you. I used to hold my brother on such a pedestal, and I yeah. think he did the same thing for me. Really? And we're like, okay, we are human. Mm. And we've seen a lot of each other's faults now, and like our weaknesses and stuff like that. and. And you, I think it's hard because we even put our parents on a pedestal. It's all yeah, this stuff, and then, and then you see something and that disappoints you, and you're like, "Well, wait, you're supposed to be this person," and then, and then you're like, "Well, no, they're human." And like, <laughs> anyway, so my brother and I have been really, really a huge support for each other yeah. in the last few years because there have been life experiences. We have been immersed in each other's lives, and you know, there's things that if we didn't want to work to have our relationship, we could have split us apart or yeah. like, you know, and so I think that we, he was the one that introduced me to, to going to that seminar that wow. changed my life, you know, and like, and every day we send each other these really cool little messages with all my sisters on the, on the chain and my brother will always send these really cool inspirational things and like sure. just keeping us, I don't know, feeling good. So he's, he's, he's our brother, he's like our, He's the only boy in the family. So sure. like, he's like our, we love him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's like that's our great. little brother, even though he's my big brother, but he's like my sure, little brother. Sure, that's so, very cool. Yeah. What was the biggest lesson you learned while being a dancer on, on Dance with the Stars? Yeah. What's the biggest thing that opened up for you? Patience, um, for sure, because you're, you, you have to be sort of selfless when you're on that show because it's not about you. And it's about the celebrity. It's about or, the celebrity. Yeah. yeah, it's about the celebrity. Teaching and constantly, right? Teaching them, watching uh, them grow, but it's very rewarding. And I think I didn't really understand that until recently. Yeah. That like the reason why it was really fun to be selfless is the reward that you would mm. get to watch somebody grow in front of your eyes and like you know physically, uh, you know, dancing wise, but then like yeah. emotionally too and seeing them come out of their, their shell and like mm. feeling confident and sexy, like that's, I mean, I was, that was obviously Apollo coming out and feeling sexy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that like 
that fulfillment on the other side. Like, it's okay that it's not about me because yeah. it's, you know. Being in service, but, giving. Yeah, giving. And like being able to um, have a, a task and you have to fulfill it and you have mm. to, you have to um, achieve that. Otherwise you're not gonna be prepared and you're gonna yeah. look silly. So I loved that. It taught me discipline for sure. I mean, I, I was taught that in England as well, but, sure. but like it taught me discipline. It taught me how to, co to commit to something and that I can't flake. Like yeah. I have to be there. Yeah. I have to be reliable. And be prepared. And be prepared. Yeah. yeah. So I loved it. Right, that's cool. And now you're judging. Yeah. <laughs> now tell me what's the biggest lesson that you've learned being a judge, being on the other side. Yeah, biggest lesson that I've learned being on being a judge is that after you've been judged for yeah, so long, that you you want to give critiques, but with an encouragement yeah. behind it, because I think that there's been times where you just kind of say what you think and then you run out of time and you're not allowed to say <laughs> what you want to say for the encouraging part. So you have to like, for me, you're like, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> and so yeah, it's, it's really making sure that whenever I say what I have to say, there's always something that is, is a good part yeah. to it that I can always see something good in whatever that is. But, but I also, I'm not just gonna say, Oh, that was great. Cause like, that's, mm that's not helping them, that's yeah. just keeping them where they're at. So yeah. I wanna be able to give some you know, criticism that helps them get better for the next week. Yeah. So I don't know, it's just, it is, it's about being authentic, but with, with a thought of encouragement, you sure. know, like, so, yeah. With, you know, the exposure to ballroom dance mm -hmm. with Dancing with the Stars and more shows and all these dance shows coming out, and I feel like more and more parents putting their kids in dance, mm -hmm. especially in the US, I don't know about around the world. Yeah. What advice would you give to either parents or kids at a young age about ballroom dance, specifically yeah. going into it, knowing what you've been through? Yeah, I think that, um, wow, it's a, really, it's a really difficult question because I went through a lot of stuff that was pretty difficult. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I've spoken out about it, but you know, there were, there were times where I felt completely alone and like, I, like nobody understands me and um, like the overly sexualized type yeah. thing, but I didn't understand that as a kid yeah. until now I'm an adult and I can look back and understand what it was. But, but those things made me a really great dancer. Yeah. So it made you driven and extremely driven, made me really passionate, made me, made me a fighter, made me strong and all of those things. So it's hard because I'm like, I, 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 I would never take it back Yeah. because this is why I'm here. But it's a very, I would never want anybody else to go through some of this of stuff, you know? So, um, so for, for my advice for young kids, I think it's an incredible, I think it's an incredible sport where you you learn um, you learn how to interact with a girl or a guy. Mm -hmm. I think, which is um, which is <laughs> maybe a good thing and a bad thing. Sure. But I think you know, like the the gentlemanly yeah. like feeling of taking care of a woman. I think is really um, and escorting. Yeah, is right? is very prominent in yeah. that world and. You know, being a female dancer definitely brings out the sensual sides, but but it's being able to balance that and being yeah. able to like that's what I do, but that's not who I am, kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, hey, I'm a huge <clears throat> fan of dancers, and there's all sorts of dancers. Dancers so are amazing. They they're really incredible, incredible. and there it's so much about the emotion that yeah. like oh man, it like when I dance, there's not there. I mean really there's nothing greater than yeah. what I feel and I'm so emerged and I'm present. It's the one time that I really truly really feel present. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, I mean, I, I, I'm not really answering this question <laughs> at all. Um, I would just say like, you know, give it, give it your all and never forget why you wanted to do it. Mm. Because when you lose sight of that, then like, what's the point? Yeah. You know, why are, why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, so just to keep doing it for, yeah for the fun and the right reasons, so yeah. That's good, good answer. I don't know. Do you feel like 
without struggle mm -hmm. that you would be able to have success as well? Or do you feel like because of the struggles you've been through, mm -hmm. the challenges going uh, to London, coming back, just like all the different confusing times because of that, you are successful? Or, and if you didn't have that, would you be where you are now? For me personally, I don't know the other. So mm -hmm. where I'm at, I, I do think that that made me who I am and wow. the struggle was necessary and the, the drive, whether it was because I felt I needed to prove myself or, yeah. or to show how strong I was, what I've done, what I've accomplished because of what I've gone through. Like that, that was something that I needed, but now I've, I don't need that anymore. And so yeah. it's a different kind of drive and passion and I know others my boyfriend he didn't have struggles and he is so passionate wow. about what he does so I think in the past I would have been like yeah you know to have struggle really helps you get somewhere but I've seen the opposite wow. like somebody who is so supported so like like his family was there through and throughout like and he just was passionate and he Amazing. loved it that's great and like he wouldn't have it any other way. Like, That's great. and so you, you can have it both ways. Okay. I think you just have to have that passion. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I've seen it both ways now, That's so good. I don't That's know. Good. <laughs> a couple questions left for you. Yeah. Um, the first one, a friend of mine asked me, he said you should, I should ask this question in my interviews from now on. So my okay. question is, and you were kind of seeding it with your, how you want to be of service and give to the world mm -hmm. as opposed to get. So if you were given, if I gave you a billion dollars right now, mm -hmm. what would you do to serve the world? Oh How would you gosh. accelerate your service? Wow. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of one place or one mm -hmm. community or something that I would do to give it to or something like that. But I would, I would definitely, I would definitely do something. Oh man, like I work with Kind Campaign. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I, I love that they have it in the school now where right. it's an outside program type thing but you know it is it's something that people want to be a part of so i would i would want to do something where whether it's something in schools with kids about moving and and um you know because i say the, the more the, the way that you move <clears throat> directly affects the way that you feel so like doing some sort of activity that is is movement and and positivity and like l lifting that person up so it would be something like that whether it's in schools or like opening yeah. facility like in like all around the states that had that where sure. like people could come in and and learn how to like not rebuild their lives but like strip and 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 be their true essence yeah. so like so but like having tools and and people that also is in a fun environment. Sure. So like, yeah, I don't yeah. know if that made any sense, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, like if I could maybe build some sort of like facility, like a, like a, not a dance studio, but uh, like a, a wellness studio a where a center where like you yeah. learn, you learn life lessons yeah. and you learn like kindness and you learn this <laughs> and you learn that. And like, because it's not about, it's not about, again, like taking stuff away, but it's how do you cure that? Mm. So like by being that kind of person. So I don't know, like you, 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 stop, the, you <laughs> stop the badness in the world by yeah. being good. So I would teach people that. I don't know, I like or that. like get a lot of people to come and teach that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, bring Tony in and teach it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Um, one more question. Yeah. And before I ask you the last question, I wanna, I want to see, is there anything you want to talk about that you're up to that you're really excited about that you want to promote out there? Where, yeah. can we, where can we find you online? How can we connect with you? How can we be yeah. a part of your, your dream? What Absolutely. Well, um, the way that you can connect with me is I'm launching actually a, a blog website type, you know, I'm launching a blog. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I try to, anyway. <laughs> and it's, um, it's obviously lifestyle, all the things that I'm really mm. passionate about, but it's also like a space, again, for like challenges wow. that I, I want to put out in the world to, to be kind or be, you know, be loving or being grateful. And, and sure. so it's a space where um, I really want to have a community of those types of people. Are you writing it or is it your content? Yeah, or? yeah. And what's it's it called? So what's the it's name just, it? It's just my name, juliannehuff.com. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, so when's that coming out? It's like end of March. So All right, perfect. Yeah. So go there, yeah, subscribe. To, yeah, and to be connected and feeling like 
um, we're, I don't know, we're in this community to get together. Mm. So. I like it. Yeah. And then um, um, going back on Dancing with the Stars. Amazing. Um, got a movie I just finished that will come out next year. Amazing. So yeah, just love and life. Subscribe to you on your website. Yeah. What are you, are you Instagram more, Twitter, Facebook? I Instagram All that right. connects to Twitter. Okay, cool. And Facebook actually, okay. but I, it's Instagram, Instagram that I do. Instagram, yeah. all right. I'm yeah. a big Instagram fan yeah. too. <laughs> cool, so make sure to go there. Um, before I ask you the final question, I just want to again okay. acknowledge you, Julianne, mm -hmm. for your joy and your love. Aww, and I know you thanks. have love written right there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it, it just comes across so powerfully thanks. and so, gracefully that's the word that's coming up for me it's like graceful mm -hmm. in this ease so i acknowledge you for Thanks. being the light and being so joyful in the world and for bringing that energy to this interview it's been it's been so much fun so thank you thank you appreciate it yeah final question is okay. what's your definition of greatness my definition of greatness wow that is a that is a tough question mm. but i think that um it's kind of what i've been saying is mm. just being authentic and and um and achieving what you feel is great, mm. not what um, not what I think the world defines as great. Um, I think that greatness is very personal. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know, achieving greatness. I'm just thinking about my stepsister who's having a baby right now. Like she's literally in the hospital. <laughs> like wow. that is achieving greatness right there. Or like, um, I don't know, like, anything. This interview is greatness. Thank it's the way you. that you look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Awesome. Well, Julianne, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>